Welcome everybody to the presentation. Um, I think as Simon uh, normally says on his power hours, I'll try to keep it short so that uh, you can get back to your Friday night. I wouldn't want you to be accused of being called a nerd um, alongside myself. Um, I'm Lesa Hisham uh, Tiani. As some of you may know, um, I'm an accountant, I'm an investor, and above a lot of things, what I'm trying to do is uh, simplify the finance world for a lot of people. And one of my mottos that I go by is people live their financial decisions, so make life easier for them. But you make it easier for them by speaking to their needs and not necessarily speaking to the exams that you've written. And if any of you are accountants um, on the call, I think you'll know um, what those exams look like. I don't wish that on anybody. But, and it will come later on when I speak to some of the, what I call the big seven uh, items of uh, the finance world. When I say people want to, you must speak to people's needs and it's because people live their financial uh, decisions. So you will see what those big seven items are. And ultimately, that's what I look uh, to often uh, simplify for you guys. I'll then head straight into the webinar itself. As Simon indicated, it's Everything Stock Files and Investment Clubs. I run my own company, Finance Hut, that does bookkeeping, taxation, as well as investments. Um, I've got a YouTube channel, those sort of things. Uh, if you look online, you will be able to, uh, to find those. Now, if we're going to everything stock files and investment clubs, and I like background, I think as Simon did indicate, um, the investment clubs and stock files have quite a lot in common. I think besides one being an English word and the other one being a broken English word, they actually have the same things in common. And from then onwards, you'll get to see that you then get to customize a few of the items. They began roughly around the 1800s um, in the Eastern, Eastern Cape with what used to be called stock fairs. And that essentially used to be a situation where the public would gather um, with English settlers and then they would exchange livestock, products, news, that sort of thing. And for more information on a huge amount of the information that I used uh, for this uh, webinar, you can have a look at, I think it was a PhD study by Mpiduzi Bupela at UKZN, and it's called The Role of Stock Files in the Economic Transformation of a Tiguini Municipality. And he studied, I think he studied something like 356 stock files over a period of a year or two, attending the meetings, what have you. And that combined with my experience then informed uh, this presentation. Now, if we get into the types of stock files that you get, you essentially start with what is called a money club. And for those of you that speak to Anna, it's essentially called Mohodi Sama, where we pull money together and on a rotational basis, we take turns to pay each other. So let's say there's four of us, it's January, we put together a thousand rands. Each month we pull together 4,000 rands and we give it to the first member. Next month, 4,000 rands to the next member up until it becomes uh, your turn to receive the 4,000 rands. And we have completed a cycle and we decide to continue uh, with that Mohodisano or the money club. I say that, that it's probably one of, it's probably the most successful and it's because it's that easy to implement, you know? It's kind of like a savings vehicle. Um, one of the people that engaged me after the title of the webinar had been um, um, advertised, said to me, is it not a credit facility? And it becomes interchangeable because there's no interest charged on that money. So it's essentially either you can put aside a thousand rand a month and for five, four months down the line, you've got 4,000 rands. But if you're anything like I am and it's difficult to save, you essentially can do that with a group of friends where you're giving each one of them a thousand rands and then four months later, they give it back to you. Now, the most prevalent, as you can see on the slide, is the funeral clubs, right? And the types of stock files. So I think we've touched on money club, right? Which functions almost like a savings slash interest-free interest um, loan account or loan vehicle. Um, and then we go to the funeral clubs. When I say most prevalent, 
when you look at, I think the research says something like 80% of stock files are essentially there to assist one another with funerals and then essentially all livestock for funerals. And when we get to the last one, asset acquisition, that also includes the grocery uh, stock files, which we'll have a look at, but then that's where you get a lot more of your investment clubs. So under the funeral clubs, um, I highlighted mainly two, the first one being Evil. And to those of you that um, are not Zulu, essentially Evil is more like a wheel. And speak to anyone that was part of this during COVID, you know, where it seemed as if at any given point in time when your phone rings, you have to prepare yourself for a funeral. I think that's what that's been one of the saddest, uh, at least in my uh, young life, one of the saddest periods in our country. And I wrote there that it carried the nation. And in essence, what it really is, so the normally 12 of you get together and you identify major items that are normally needed when there's a funeral. And if you know anything about black funerals, you'd know that they sometimes tend to be something close to an extravaganza. I think we celebrate life um, at the finish line. And so what happens is each member will be allocated a particular item. So let's say sugar, fish oil, chicken, dry packs, those sort of things. And whenever a funeral occurs in the family of one of us, you then have to be, you, have, you then have to buy that particular item. What that does is it hedges against inflation because instead of saying we're putting together, together a thousand rands, and then when somebody passes away, we'll give you 12,000 rands or however amount um, of money we have. We essentially say you will track the price of sugar, you will track the price of bright packs, and just always have money on standby in the event that a funeral occurs. And then you will then um, buy that particular thing. Part of why it's called Evili as well is because it's not like you want to buy sugar forever. And so now if you're the person that buys sugar and fish oil, you feel as if you're, I'm getting the worst of the items as far as inflation is concerned. We then take turns as well. So if this particular funeral allows in charge of buying fish oil or sunflower oil, the next uh, funeral, I probably then would be responsible for buying uh, something else, assuming that it's not my funeral, of course. Then another common one, as far as funerals go, is a livestock one. And I wrote that home. And you'll see in the presentation, I, I, I refer to different languages as well. And that just speaks to how the same concept has been evidenced elsewhere and most probably become more dominant in a particular culture, a particular um, that language speaking people. And so with the Homu there, it's more livestock. And again, it speaks to some of the customs of funerals I mean, the black culture where if somebody passes away, a cow, especially in the Zulu culture and the Bedi culture, a cow has to be slaughtered and essentially gets to accompany the person um, in the afterlife. Again, one of the things that you're looking at there is because over time, we've evolved from cow skins that would cover the deceased into coffins. We've kept the practice though of still uh, killing the cow, covering the coffin in some instances with uh, a blanket or the cow skin uh, to play with the two symbologies. And then ultimately then the meat uh, gets enjoyed there. But that's another place where stock files play a very key role because as some of you may know, it's not every day that um, you've got five to 8,000, 10,000 rands lying around uh, for a cow in the event of a funeral. And then when we now get to where investment clubs also become quite common, you then get your asset acquisition type stock files slash investment clubs. And as indicated, it starts anywhere from your grocery types. So every December, we would have collected money throughout the year. We go to a particular uh, store and then we buy groceries and we divide those amongst us. And then that carries us through the December, sometimes through the January period. As most people would know, those are so often associated with tough um, months in the year. Other items then um, 
escalate and then you then start getting your property type stock files, your share type investment clubs, and they function along a similar methodology where as a group we get together, we put money together, and then we acquire that particular uh, asset that we're looking for. If we can go on to the next slide, Sai. I then went and researched how has industry reacted to this, right? Because we often think that stock files and investment clubs, they're solely investment vehicles that are informal and so informal that nobody understands them and nobody's participating. On the contrary, industry actually is very aware of some of the elements of the investment clubs. So you start with bank accounts and you'll see the smiley face there that perhaps is a bit upside down. It indicates how banks uh, have responded to it. And what they've done is they've essentially said, if two or more signatories come to the bank, they can open an account, a stock file account, they will keep the money for you. And then whenever you need it, those two people will come again and they will throw, will throw the money and um, disperse it as you guys um, desire. Why I've got the upside down smiley face is because as banks, as, as notoriously as they are, they tend to give you bad interest rates. And I think that's going to speak to the number one question that you guys posed, which is how can I supercharge uh, my stock file? So the smiley face there is for the interest rates or the return that you get from the banks. Then you've got the wholesalers, um, very prevalent with your cash and carries, your boxes, and even macro has even joined um, that industry. And what they have realized is, well, these people come with a lump sum of money at the end of the year, Easter, around certain periods, and they are looking for huge quantities of stock. And what those retailers have then decided to do is to say, listen, how about instead of using the bank, you leave the money with us. And at the end of the year, we will give you all the items that you're looking for. And I think, especially when you get to something like butcheries at 8 Cake, they will essentially say to you that, listen, as long as you guys can contribute as you have envisioned, come end of the year, we will give you guys, for example, a cow equivalent of um, meat. Then you've got funeral parlors, and what funeral parlors have done, they've said instead of the traditional funeral cover model, we actually will take care of the entire burial. So you don't have to worry about a coffin, you don't have to worry about um, transport, you don't have to worry about groceries, as well as a bit of um, airtime money, as we've seen with some of the adverts on TV, we'll cover that for you. Now, why does industry do that? The simple answer is you are essentially giving them, again, a cash-free loan. And I think we'll cover that again when I get to the slide on what, how does this work in the background. But the essence of it is if I'm a reseller, if I've got a business and I know that on a monthly basis, I'm going to be receiving 10, 12,000 rands from this group of people, that allows me to buy stock basis and come the end of the year, predictably so, I will then give them their stock as they require for that um, particular period or for that maturity period. And so it becomes sort of a mutual uh, relationship. Also, it's born out of some of the shortcomings where previously members would keep the money, come end of the year, the member has spent the money without the knowledge of the group and we're not able to acquire that particular thing uh, that we had gathered together for. If we then go to the shortcomings, the first one that you'll see there is fatigue, i.e. the members feel like they're going in circles. And I think that's more common with Mohodisan, where it starts initially, you're not able to save, and you decide, let me join a few friends and have an accountability partner, and then I will save alongside them. Your turn comes, you receive the money, you spend it on whatever you had planned to spend, Sometimes it's washing machines, sometimes it's fridges, sometimes it's school fees. Um, I've seen a whole variety of people spending their money on certain things. But it sort of feels like it's just going in circles because it then kicks in that I can actually do this myself. And I'll come to um, one of the reasons why that is a very dangerous 
uh, thing to experience and how to deal with it, right? Then the next shortcoming is that the immediate impact is not readily visible. That often happens where if we're saving towards, let's say December groceries, or we're saving towards uh, property ownerships, share investments, that sort of thing, it tends to take time to take off, especially with the big asset items. And for a while, some members, depending on your risk tolerance, depending on your pensions, it may feel as if some nothing is happening. And as a result, people then tend to give up. One of the other shortcomings is that it's sometimes not easy to exit. You do get stock files that say before you exit, which is a common feature, Essentially, it must go around first. Everybody must have had the same benefit that you may have had or that they may have signed up for. And then only then may you exit the group. And often that's done to preserve the integrity of the goal that we had set in mind. You wouldn't want to have a situation where when one member leaves, it jeopardizes the benefits for everybody else. And you'll see when I come to the advantages or benefits, it's because predominantly stock files and investment clubs are actually social vehicles more than um, any of the other factors that we are looking at, especially when we look at other more traditional type of vehicles. Then when we say funeral ones tend to be forever, nuclear families find, uh, find it difficult. I think that might have been a spelling mistake on my side. But essentially with the funeral um, stock files, what often tends to happen is that you, the breadwinner will join the stock file and then they will then add the nuclear family members. And then as time goes on and that goes along with delinquents, the breadwinner either passes away or the breadwinner feels as if I, this, if this doesn't work for me anymore. What happens in that regard is that it becomes difficult to then continue with the stock file because now the reliable source of income that comes in has essentially um, dissipated or, or gone away. And then that makes it um, one of the shortcomings uh, of the stock file, right? And one of the other ones, especially with delinquents, you get a situation in stock files where the main member passes away and the family rightfully so says to the group, they're not able to afford the payments that the main member was um, was contributing. And what that does is it jeopardizes the returns or the ability to support the remaining members. So even if the family opts out, number one, they themselves um, lose out on that future funeral benefit, but the existing members, the ability to raise the finance that they previously would also diminishes. And then when we look at uh, the remaining two, the replacement of members, it becomes difficult to also find members with a similar mindset to the already existing group members. And that often becomes one of the shortcomings of stock files and it ends up with them dissolving. The last shortcoming would be fees and inflation. As indicated, the bank will barely pay you any interest, but the monthly fees will continue to go off. In the event where members are keeping uh, the money, you've had situations where, I don't know if it's one, they used to be called, um, when I was growing up, it used to be called the society. And what would happen is on, an, on a month where it's your turn to host the group, you essentially would have to buy lunch and cook and essentially host everybody and host the meeting. That actually is a form of fees because now it's costing the stock file that amount of money to host the stock file and whatever the member would have been planning to buy with the stock file essentially gets eaten away by the fact that when they're hosting you guys the money has to be spent on food and a few items that make the house um, hospitable and then inflation in that for as long as the money is not getting a return above inflation you essentially are losing money and I think that's the stage at which people then gave or gave me a call and say, how on earth can we do this investing thing and make it a higher, better return from our stock file? Now to the benefits of stock files. I think I just was feeling my energy go down a bit as I was looking at the shortcomings. I should have done it the other way around so that I build my emotional tolerance for the negatives. When we come to the benefits of stock files, 
the number one benefit is essentially that social ties and cohesion you know as human beings we are social beings and i think we saw this a lot with covid where the minute we were restricted and weren't able to go anyway all of a sudden our lives became claustrophobic it became almost impossible to just exist within yourselves and i think the psychologists on the call will, will attest to the fact that a lot of uh, the mental health mental wellness items and stuff started becoming very topical and that came from the fact that we had such a distressing event that pulled us away from one another being in south africa and in africa predominantly what that social those social ties and cohesion actually help with as well is that a lot of the times constituents or members of stock files remember it goes back to the 1800s what you'd find is that it would normally be in lower lsm so your lsm one two three four where you can't necessarily cover everything by yourself and so there's a certain form of neighborliness that works to help us achieve particular goals which we ordinarily wouldn't be able to you know which speaks to the item of accountability partners as well as indicated with the early example if you're putting away a thousand rand a month it becomes very difficult to just keep on looking at it monthly growing at 0.2 percent interest rate and then come end of the year go and buy your fridge your microwave your um, washing machine that sort of thing but if you're doing it in the in the format of a stock file you essentially have got accountability partners and that's the same with investment clubs i don't know how many times i've withdrawn money from my own investments what the benefit that that gives you when you're part of an investment club is that you can't unilaterally decide to withdraw money and so it essentially keeps you longer inside that investment that you guys are going for um, as a group then you've got shared hosting that speaks to the event um, previously and from the previous slide where you find that people were essentially carrying the cost as the host for these meetings what has evolved from that as well is that we now get a shared type of um, or at least the benefits is that you then get a shared type of environment and what do I mean? What do I contrast that with? Today, if I want to get together with five of my friends, I send an invite. And the friend that wasn't invited, obviously, is going to say, why wasn't I invited? But by sending an invite, I'm implying that I'm going to cover the costs for this get together. And one of the benefits of a stock file is that we actually can have regular get togethers, normally once a month, on the cost of the stock file, which then makes it a shared um, cost type of then the next one is financial risk management the management of random events and i think i'll speak to that in the next slide when i speak about what is actually happening in the background you get your interest-free financing and it's actually easy to join so it's not easy to add a, a member once a member has left but it's easy to join in that it's easy to start number one you get a group of friends you shake hands and the first uh, debit order goes off and it's also easy to join in that you often won't struggle to find a stock file. If you speak to somebody next to you and you say, look, I'm looking for a grocery stock file, chances are within three degrees of separation, they're able to say, let me hook you up with a friend or so that is looking to start a similar one. So they're quite easy to join and accessible, which is a direct contrast to when we speak ETFs, unit trusts, not to bash those shares, those sort of things, we often find that people don't know where to go. Where do I buy these shares? But what does it mean? What happens to my money the minute I press a deposit? Does it disappear? And even worse on a Friday, if you, if you deposit money today, I think your weekend becomes a lot more uncomfortable. Up until around nine o'clock on Monday, it shows up in your share account. So it's that accessibility of stock files that then um, is a benefit when it comes to taking your financial um, life forward. So if we can go to the next slide. Now, when we talk about what's happening in the background, and this is the part that I was then dreading because I don't want to get too technical in this regard. Essentially what's happening, it's, it's collective goal setting and risk management. 
And as I indicated in the previous slide, when we speak about random events, we know certain events are going to occur, you know? We're going to lose a loved one. We're going to need to get married. We're going to need to buy assets. And some of those events, we don't really have much control over them, except to know that when they do happen, we do need to, need to be prepared for it. And that's where the risk management uh, becomes very strong, right? As you can see, there, they say an event that's too big or too far or too unpredictable, it's shared amongst um, one's community based on regular stipulated manageable cash flow. So we don't know how much a funeral costs, even though we don't know how, when it's going to occur. And so that risk management and that unpredictability gets taken away in that whenever the funeral happens, there's a vehicle that is there to carry uh, this item. And I think, just remind me in the q and if I don't speak to it, when we speak about um, how to supercharge my stock file, one of the things that I say, perhaps it's not broken. And that speaks to this particular point in that they actually do serve as a sort of emergency fund where when an unpredictable event happens, you then have got the support of your community to carry you through that um, item. The other thing that's happening in the background, quite to um, the surprise of most people, is that there's very strong administration and record keeping. If you've spoken to the chairperson or the secretary or the treasurer of a stock file, you will be impressed at the mental mathematics that they're able to do. I think it's right up there with um, taxi mathematics. At any given point in time, they're able to pull out who has contributed how much, who has skipped which months, and who owes the stock fell how much. And that is a very, um, a very commendable quality to have. I mean, especially if you consider when some of us do finances of companies, what have you, and one of the first things that we look for is the bookkeeping. How well is that done? And all that is is record keeping and stock and and, um, and administration. And the level at which stock files do that, it's almost unparalleled, especially considering that it's an informal vehicle. You know, owners, I mean, um, management and executives of JSC listed companies themselves often have a hard time reporting to shareholders information that's important. Whereas with stock files, they're able to keep an investment clubs equally. They're able to keep that administration and record keeping and keeping and then report on the very salient factors. You know, if the sugar spoils, if the health of or the quality of the meat in a particular area is not as good as in another area, that information goes around very quickly and comes through in essentially the benefits that the members get. Then when we talk about ownership of deliverables, we often talk about the apathy of South Africans. You know, we don't seem to have an accountability when it comes to service delivery, when it comes to things happening. If you look into a stock file, one of the things that tends to stand out a lot, especially, for example, when you look at people volunteering to do, to do shopping, running around stock counts, that particular thing, the ownership is very high. The election of a chairperson often is undisputed, treasurer undisputed, and that level of ownership isn't always exhibited in other vehicles where responsibility sort of falls through the cracks. It's not clear who should do what, even though we all know what must happen. You know, people will say we should go um, to the shops and buy groceries, and then who's we? And one of the things that happened very well in stock files is that you get um, a very high volunteering and ownership of deliverables type of attitude. And then the other thing that's happening in the background is there's a lot of social accountability and enforcement of the resolutions of meetings. It's very seldom that you'll find in a stock file that you agree on something and then it doesn't get implemented. And so that's one of the benefits of what happens in the background as we go through um, the monthly exercise or the yearly exercise of stock files. Now, if we can go to the legal and financial structure, 
overwhelmingly the majority of um, investment clubs and stock files are informal and unregistered. This is despite the existence of, the, of NASA, the National Stock File Association of South Africa. And even with them, when you look at uh, the NASASA website, they even say they're self-regulated uh, body. So even then it, it puts the, the, the regulation or the formality of it at a very low bar. Similarly with um, investment clubs, the closest that an investment club can get um, to being regulated is if it becomes big enough and structured in such a way that, is a, that it is a collective investment scheme. And the requirements for that, um, I think I'll link somewhere. So I probably will put it as a YouTube channel on, the, on, a, on YouTube. I'll reply to that and just link there. But the requirements to be a CIS are quite onerous and often don't get met by um, investment clubs. The major distinction often is the fact that the club would be the owner of the asset and us, we would be the beneficiaries of the club itself. Whereas CISs, um, collective investment schemes, you own the asset and you just have a middleman. So be it one of the asset managers or financial services service providers managing that asset on your behalf. So the asset belongs to you and you've got this middle uh, middleman um, managing it on your behalf. And then the dispensing, dispensing the money according to the constitution and mandate of the group, that's essentially the financial structure. So the collecting of regular contributions and the, dispen the dispensing of the money, that's the financial structure, also quite informal, but very regular in that it is very clear when we will be collecting money. Then when we look at the secretarial matters, I think you'll see as the slides uh, go further, um, they become a lot more detailed, but I'm comfortable unless in the Q&A it comes up that these items, a lot of uh, you guys are familiar with. So the drawing up the constitution, the accepting and allowing of existing members, it's often very um, club dependent, but it's often very standardized. You know, the drawing up the of the constitution, it normally would start with the goal, and then there's rules of engagement and things like how often we meet, who's the chairperson, who's the treasurer, and then you've got a constitution, everybody signs it and everybody um, lives to it. Then the accepting of new members and the allowing of exits, again, normally at inception, and then from then onwards, it would be by invite um, or recommendation of one member, and it's followed by a vote by the group, whether they accept the person or not. Then the last one would be the decision-making process. For both, it's very democratic. Often each person gets a vote and it's guided by the constitution and a reminder by the chairperson of the goals of the association. So if you bring an investment opportunity to the group, first of all, we'll see, does it meet the, the goals of the, of the association? And then from then onwards, after you've explained it and presented it, we then will take a vote on whether it should um, be accepted or not. Then when you look at tax matters, essentially what you will see with tax matters is that often they're not recognized as a separate entity. You guys are there as individuals in your own capacity and whatever distributions you guys get, you're supposed to declare um, yourself on e-filing um, and you're subject to the normal tax tables. Outside of that, there's almost no way of source picking that up. The one that you do get, and that sometimes then becomes why investment club perhaps may be seen as a more formal vehicle. They tend to be incorporated as a company um, some of the times, and then, then you become subject to um, the normal tax tables of a company, which is um, 27 slash 28% um, as per the Income Tax Act. And then from there, the costs that are incurred in the company can then be, um, you can claim deductions and then you get taxed on the taxable income on that. And I think the thing that I'd pause on in this regard would be the difference between individuals and companies, how they get taxed. And that's not particularly something that is 
investment club and stock file dependent. That's more your types of entities dependent. So as an individual, there are certain income, you earn your income, you pay your tax. So it's a gross income, you pay tax, and then you get certain deductions. So medical aid, pension fund, that sort of thing. And then the net that you have after that, that's what you take home with you and you go and fight inflation with that. On the other hand, as a company, you stipulate the activities, the main activities that you have as a company. And what SARS or the tax regime allows you to do is to earn your income, subtract your expenses. So for example, if you meet as, a, as an investment club as a regular feature, SARS would allow that you deduct those meals, those costs of meeting as a tax deduction. And then your ultimate income, the taxable income on that would then be what's taxed after you guys have incurred the expenses. Then when you've got vehicles like easy equities or you invest in through a broker, they would then essentially follow the tax regimes as they know it. So for example, in the example of easy equities, you would register as a company and have a company account and they've built into their systems to calculate the capital gains when you sell shares, to calculate the dividends tax when you get dividends from companies. And what's interesting while I'm speaking about dividends, once the dividends are dispersed into your hands for tax purposes you can claim either a, a deduction or an exemption for the tax in the case of a company so on easy equities for example if you're a company you'll get the entire dividend so let's say it's 10 rand the dividend you'll get the whole 10 rand if you individual if you're an individual 10 rand they will withhold two rand and you will get eight rand. But on your tax return, you actually can apply two SARS to say, look, I received two rand as a dividend from, um, what's this, from an investment of mine. And then SARS would then see that as an exemption essentially. And then, oh, I'm freezing mentally. Um, they essentially would pay it back. I'll just check, check that my brain just skipped on that technicality, pardon me on that one. And then we say and more. The and more is essentially just to give you a few interesting graphs. On your y-axis, you've got the value of stock files, and then on your uh, x-axis, you've got the years. Interestingly, in the year 1989, there was only about 200 million rands in stock files, all the way up to today in 2022 you've got about 45 billion uh, rands in stock files. And I think I just kept that format there so that we can actually see what Jacob Zuma was facing when he had to read numbers. A bit of a non-funny joke in that regard. Um, and when you take the CAGR, the compounded annual growth rate of stock files, you're looking at something like 22% per annum that they've been growing at. What's important though to note with that figure, because they so expenditure in, 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 in nature, in structure. So what tends to happen is that this money is not accumulating. This is the amount of money that gets raised on a yearly basis. So from zero to 45 billion, by December you've bought groceries, there's been funerals, you name it. And January we start again. And that's a 45 billion that gets raised on, 11 uh, by 11.5 million South Africans, which is quite a lot. It works out to about 4,000 rand per South African in that regard. The next slide was just to compare how much collective investment schemes have relative to stock files. And you can see stock files and, many, um, and investment clubs. We are very minuscule in this industry. That long chart that you see there, that's three trillion rands that is in your collective investment scheme. So it's your unit trusts, your um, exchange traded funds, those sort of things. It's a three trillion rand economy, which is gonna be important when we speak to the last slide, which is the what now, how do we get there? How do we get to that three trillion rands? Which is often the question, how do I get the most out of my stock file? How do I make sure that my stock file 
is a super stock firm. And so, I don't know if you're on the slide, last slide, but I'll speak to it now. And I think this is what a lot of people have actually been contacting me on, such that I felt the research that I was doing, it felt as if I was doing that for myself and people are predominantly interested in this, right? Why it was important to give the research is because this slide out of context doesn't make sense. It feels as if I'm sending you back to uh, sender, you know? And in the first instance, I say maybe it's not broken. And as I indicated in the, in the earlier slides on the benefits and what's happening in the background, we have one of the biggest wealth inequalities in the world and income inequalities in the world. And what stock files and investment clubs have done, you will see they actually found in environments where there tends to be people that have got um, very low incomes. And it goes back to that social cohesion and that pooling of funds concept. And it fills a gap there. Traditionally, if you were to come and say, can I open a portfolio and invest on your behalf? The first thing that I would say you must have is an emergency fund, which is three to six months of your expenses, so that in the event of anything happening, you're not going to interrupt the, the investment. And so I, saw, I thought it's important to say stock files are perhaps not broken, especially when you look at how minuscule they are compared to co the collective investment scheme industry. Perhaps they're not investment vehicles. They're supposed to be that stopgap vehicle for those too big, unpredictable, too far events that you and I are not able to prepare for well in advance. But once we've crossed that hurdle and you guys as a, as a group have decided that, listen, you don't have to worry about emergency funds. We sorted, we can handle this. The most important thing that I say is understand each other because unlike traditional investing, investing vehicles, you probably got together because you're friends or because you have some sort of alliance with one another. You're definitely not strangers. So understand each other a lot because once money gets introduced into some of these relationships, a lot of things tend to happen that then break you up. So you wouldn't want to transact from a position of assuming because you're friends, you've got the same, the same mindsets and the same understandings of these concepts and then find out 100,000 rands down the line that actually you had two different things in mind when you said you want to start an investment club. Then the second one I said is understand time horizons, which goes with the almost second last one, understand asset types. And I think a very good um, podcast to listen to for this is the Fed Wallet Show, which speaks a lot um, about these items. And in, in essence, what you want to do is you want to get to a position where, as a group, you all understand that you're not going to hit a home run in one year of you guys being an investment club or a stock firm. You're probably not going to do it in two years or three years either, which speaks to that second um, shortcoming of the results are not immediately evidenced, right? So if you understand the time horizons of different asset types, and just quickly, a bank account, the time horizon is immediate, but that's also why the interest on it is very low. Compared to something like property or shares, those you tend to hold ideally for longer than 10 years. If you hold them for shorter than 10 years, you tend to make a loss on those items, except Cape Town, of course, in the last couple of years, the way the property uh, values just boomed. So that's why it's very important if you decide that you want to supercharge your stock file and start experimenting with items outside of what it was designed for, understand different asset types and how long those asset types take to generate the type of return you envisage. I say keep the cash flowing, and that's because whether you're investing in shares or you're investing in anything for that matter, float is one of the biggest advantages or advantages to investments. It's often called dollar cost averaging when you're buying uh, index funds. And why you want to keep the cash flowing, you don't want to have a situation where you've got an opportunity, but then you must now get together and quickly put together 5,000 rands each, just so that you can um, 
go for that opportunity. So if you keep the money going as an investment club, even though you don't have any immediate opportunities, you build up a cash reserve to be able to take advantage of opportunities. Then the last one is the big finance questions. And I'm just going to list them as we go into the Q&A. And this is what I would like you to look at when you say I want to supercharge your uh, supercharge my stock file. The world of finance is predominantly trying to service you on one of probably seven items. And in order of occurrence, they're more likely to happen in this order. You finish school, you get a job, and the first thing is you want to start some sort of savings. Normally, your entry-level salary is nowhere near what you need for the type of life you thought you're going to have after school. And so that's where stock files starts to then be important. And that's where even in finance, it's one of the big seven um, finance considerations. The way the finance world um, solves this problem is you've got credit cards and bank overdrafts. And so the investment club and the stock file is essentially assimilating that type of a structure. So if you want to understand how to supercharge your stock fell, look perhaps more into the credit considerations. Then as time goes, you'll start to look at mortgage decisions. So you want to buy a property, you want to buy a vehicle, and you decide to do that with a, within, a, within the context of a group. You're looking at the mortgage type of decisions. Then you decide that perhaps you want to get married or start a family, and that's perhaps what your stock fell may have been uh, looking at. That's one of the items that the finance world hasn't covered as much, but we actually enjoy the benefits of married families, married couples, and married societies. That's another financial consideration. The cost of weddings out the roof. Then from there, you have kids, and you start looking at college savings for those kids. That's often another type of financial product that you'll find on the market. And if you say you want to supercharge your stock fell or your investment clubs, Perhaps look then around that. There's a group of you guys, you're 26, 30, you've got two-year-olds, zero-year-olds. You know they're going to go to varsity one day. But the advantage you have, because they're spaced out, so friend one has got a five-year-old and myself, I've got no kids. As a group, we commit to pay the school fees or the university fees, perhaps of first year or first year and second year of any of our children. And as each child reaches varsity, we then pay that person's uh, college fees. Then from there, you've got um, retirement planning, which is in essence the bulk of your working life. You're working towards building assets, and those assets should be able to take care of you in retirement, as well as the uh, pension fund itself. So you buy a house so that in retirement you don't have to rent you pay off your cars so that in retirement you don't have to rent that sort of thing and then the difference then gets covered by what your RA or your pension fund will pay you and then the second last one is estate planning what happens after i'm gone and that question is becoming more and more prominent as we become more financially savvy and that's one of the things that perhaps you can look at as a, as a stock file to say, perhaps let's buy assets and own them in a vehicle. For example, a PTY. I know people like trusts, but trusts are getting, um, the old, almost all the loopholes of trusts have been um, written away by the tax laws. I think Previn Gordon was the last person to deliver a proper um, mail to trusts. And the idea is to move you away from that vehicle, obviously because People that came before us were very naughty using trusts and move you closer towards PTYs and that sort of vehicles. So for estate planning purposes, perhaps as a group, you can say we register a company, we have shares in that company, and our kids then become the beneficiaries or the owners of those shares once we have left. Saves you a lot of um, the estate uh, costs and estate duty and selling of assets and that sort of thing. Which then brings me to the last item. All of these items throughout your working life, they've got tax ramifications. And I don't think a stock fellow investment club will cater to tax ramifications, but because, and I think that's one of the items that I hadn't touched on, on the benefits of doing it as a group. 
the learnings that you guys take from a financial perspective throughout this journey. Tax is often a daunting topic. That's probably is one of the topics that as a group you can look at and say, you know what, for all the vehicles or for all the assets that we own, we're actually going to start taking tax modules and spreading the information around amongst one another. And by the time you um, reach your estate planning or your enjoyment of your retirement, you can be a tax survey individual because that goes with you all the way through. You pay taxes even after you're gone. And yeah, I think Sai, that's a nice, better enough note to go into the Q&A. Um, but I think it opens the floor as well for the scope of technicalities of questions that may arise. Yeah, Thank you very much, guys. Uh, yeah. Appreciate that. That was excellent. And yeah, we pay tax even after we're gone. I, I'd never thought of it that way. Uh, so to be a scary point. Uh, folks, if you've got some questions, we've got a couple of minutes. Uh, we certainly would take those questions. Apologies for the, the tech issue. We have recorded it. So I will video, I will put the, the tomorrow afternoon um, because I'm going to have to edit it just to make it all slick and everything. But a great question coming through. Can the provisions of the constitution of the stock file be used against a person legally? I suppose you could. If everyone signed it, it's a contract, you could sue. But of course, that's a massive cost in many cases, and it might just be cost prohibitive. Did you ask the question and answer it, Sai? Well, I, th I think that's the answer. I mean, I, 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 I mean, unless you've got a different view. I mean, I, I think suing people is just I mean, <laughs> an expensive way to, to, to enforce. And, and it comes back to your point. Make sure you know yeah. who you're getting involved with. Yeah. Um, loosely speaking, they can, but the catch-all phrase of our legal system is that whatever provision it is, it has to be um, legal. So you can't put an illegal um, provision in your constitution and then use it to then punish a member. Um, so I'm not a lawyer, I'm an accountant. Um, you can consult a lawyer on that one, but just loosely speaking, your constitution would have to cover everything within the ambit of legality. And if that's the case, then you 100% can have provisions that if members violate, then you take them to court. The, con the constitution of an investment club is actually recognized as a legal document. Um, so you actually can take someone to court um, where they're delinquent in terms of the constitution. And it is a valid uh, provision that you have put in there. And, and maybe the trick with that is to have a lawyer in your in your in, in your in your club so that they can, they they can run that process. Uh, another question coming through: suggest a stock fall to collectively buy shares on the stock market. Uh, you touched on it, but it is certainly a route to do it. Although uh, there are there are benefits of of, of perhaps doing a, a more formal route in terms of a PTY, and and you touched on some of the 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 the, the, the benefits of that. The, I, I like the more formal of it because, as you say, yeah. friends are great, money gets involved, things can get a little bit wild. Yeah, and I did that with my um, investment club, uh, 1000, 1000 Capital. Um, you can look it up. We've kept the information there. We've paused the investment club. But I did that, uh, Sai, or the person asking the question, where essentially what we did was we formed an investment club, had a constitution, then registered a PTO or PTY, and then the constitution formed the basis essentially of our MOI. Obviously, that's Greek or legal for a lot of technical stuff, but it just means that we created a vehicle, a PTY, a private company that allowed us to be an investment club. And then we formed a mandate and we said, this is how we invest the money. And I was in charge of those investments. Whenever I go on the JSE inside the Easy Equity, so we, con we collect money, part of it goes in the, on the JSE, I literally look at our investment methodology and no matter how enticing a particular share is, if it does not fit our methodology, I don't buy it. And for the investment club, I buy it in that regard. I think when we dissolved, I had had like a 55 or 58% return over three years excluding dividends, I think, um, in, on that. And that makes me look smart, but the truth of it is the formality is actually what helped because there were times when the investment was very low and I was tempted to explain to shareholders that, hey guys, maybe this is not working anymore. 
but the fact that we had very strict rules that prohibited me from exiting investments, they then eventually paid themselves off. And that's the advantage of that formality, but also the advantage of having studied the timelines of the different asset types. Within three years, you don't sell equities because whatever your company is going through, unless it's fraud and they're making headlines, they're likely to overcome it. I think Simon, for a good five to 10 years, we are buying shares in Woolworths and then they dropped all the way to like 37 rands or 40 rands or something crazy like that. And today Woolworths is at 77 rands and I'm one of the people that had written them off. But a good investment philosophy as well as understanding your timelines is essentially why you then came out smarter than me. <laughs> in places but but i take your point and i like that thing around around the understand those timelines and, and investing is rocky uh we've got two quick more questions and time, so i'll take them quick can a funeral society invest in a tax-free investment uh you can't uh tax-free investments are for individuals only uh no those no other structures of any sort individuals only uh and then a question diane you ask if a bank goes bankrupt and stock for has more than the allowed bank guarantee best way to protect it. So we don't have a deposit guarantee in South Africa. It is currently before parliament. Uh, I think Saab expects to implement it around the first quarter of next year. It will be 100,000 per deposit. The, the, the simple way to do it, and, and it's a hack, the, the, the limit will be 100,000. Uh, Saab will tell you that covers 96% of, of, of bank accounts. Uh, if you've got more than 100,000, different banks as simple as that bank one for the first hundred bank two for the second hundred so far the payouts such as vbs and even back in, in sumbo back in the day that was goodwill of the government uh, that, that wasn't a legal requirement as i say we are getting a deposit insurance act coming in into the first quarter of next year i'm not seeing more questions coming through we have hit the time Cecilia, that was absolutely brilliant uh, i i i love the the, the, the start right at the beginning, work the way through. Really, really appreciate it. Ladies and gents, appreciate your time this evening. Everyone look after yourself as always. If you can, look after somebody else as well. Ben, really appreciate it. Thank you very much, sir.